Hi, this is Pastor Jim, continuing my thoughts on the study. I had a question from one of my brothers today about the seven churches, and I thought probably a lot of people wonder about the seven churches in Revelation. And one of the things that I've always done when I approach Revelation is, first of all, try to approach it literally. In other words, we're so worried about the allegory and the symbolism that sometimes we miss the fact that it's all being explained. And when it comes to the seven churches, just prior to talking about each one of them individually, there is a vision that, he, that John is having where there's the uh, lampstands and the stars and things. And then Christ actually touches him, tells him not to be afraid, and explains what they are. The mystery of the seven stars, which you saw in my right hand, and the seven golden lampstands. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven lampstands, which you saw, are the seven churches. Now, that, again, clarifies what the vision, what it, what it was. It's going to be talking about seven churches. In the next couple of chapters, there'll be a little excerpt about each of those seven churches. Now, people have said sometimes that this represents, these seven churches represent different ages, uh, that just literally seven churches. Uh, and certainly when we look at the problems that are in these seven churches, we can see that every age has had pretty much a representation of all seven. So I have gone away from the idea that these would represent different ages because even today, as I go through what each church experienced uh, and how they were responding to Christ and how they were living or not living for Christ, we have churches that do the same thing today, going through the same experience. So we see, first of all, Ephesus. And Ephesus is the one who had lost track of her first love. In other words, doing well seemed to be doing great. But in reality, when you check closely, you realize that they had lost sight of what they were all about and that they needed to love Christ and to spread the gospel of Christ. And then you come to the next church, which is Smyrna, and everything seems to be okay there, except this church is going through a lot of tribulation, a lot of problems, a lot of heartaches are going on there. You get to Pergamos and you have a compromising church. Their practices are bad and some of their doctrine is bad. You get to Thyatira, it's even worse. It's considered a corrupt church. It has a spirit of Jezebel in it. So here's four churches so far that I believe each one of these types of churches can be found in even today's age. So then we go to the next chapter, and it's talking about Sardis, uh, and says that uh, he knows their works, that you have a name, that you are alive, but you're dead. In other words, we, we are all aware of these churches that seem to be huge, maybe mega churches that seem to have some sort of life because there's so many people involved, but in fact, they're dead in terms of the Holy Spirit, dead in terms of doing anything for the kingdom of God, in, in terms of expressing anything that is holy and righteous uh, and living for Christ. And then he talks about the church in Philadelphia and talks that, that they are basically a very faithful church. There are churches, even today, that are very faithful who love God, who serve God, committed to God, and never turn away from what it is that they've been told to do in terms of the mission, which is the Great Commission, okay? walking with Christ. And then the last church is, is the church at Laodicea, which is the lukewarm church. These are the ones who are, well, they're not necessarily corrupt. They're not necessarily dead. <clears throat> they, they just seem to be just kind of existing not living, not, not really doing anything, uh, getting along with everybody maybe, but because you get along with everybody, you don't really take a stand on anything. So again, there's, a, there's the idea that all of seven of these churches can be discovered in our world today. We have brothers and sisters around the world who are suffering, who are being persecuted, who are being martyred. We have some who are living in churches that are dead and not serving God at all. Uh, we have some who have lost track of their first love. Everything is going so well for them. Everything, the wealth, and they have no real needs. And, and so they're just kind of uh, forgetting why they really exist. And then we have lukewarm churches. Uh, they're all there. Everything we see in these first three chapters on the seven churches, we can find representations of those kinds of bodies throughout the world today. So again, I don't look at them as ages, not saying that you're a sinful person if you do, or that you look at them allegorically that there's that there's something wrong or sinful about that. I just think that they can be taken literally without any problem, and therefore that's how I choose to do it. I hope that helps you. Have a great day. Bye-bye.